I'm going to quit drinking so much, I'm not going to have any drink left for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so well, here we go. You know what, I used to drink all my drinks like that too fast everywhere. Yeah, don't be guzzling them. I already have, I already need a refill. We might need to pause real quick to go fill it up. No. no. All right, hey everyone, this is Art Mayshack and welcome to my podcast. This is the first one that I'm doing. And a little bit about myself, I'm a uh, um, designer photographer based here in Houston, Texas. And uh, I got Susan Curry here today. Hey, everybody. And we're just going to sit here. This is our first podcast, so we're going to sit here and talk and, you know, learn a little bit about her, you know, about me, whatever, you know. So, all right. So, Susan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, that's a big question. Where do I start? My name is Susan Curry, and most of you guys all know that I'm from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And, well, you know that. Do you guys know that? Um, if you follow me online, you do. And uh, yeah, I've been born and raised in Oklahoma City, so if you ask me where am I from, what do I do, I guess that's the most basic, but I was born in the 80s, uh, grew up in the 80s, baby, into the 90s, oh, yeah. and grew up a country girl. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I, uh, we built alfalfa, we helped take care of the cows, we grew gardens. We live no. on dirt, you know, gravel roads. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where I come from, I guess you could say. And then moved to the city, like, 91. And yeah. then from there, um, you know, lived the city life, went to school, high school. Oh, yeah. Started to go to college. Um, then, you know, then I just worked for years and then got back into college. Oh, you're in college right now? Yes. Okay, yes. what are you studying? I am studying business, mm. specifically um my degree is actually, um, it's actually called a Doctorate of Business Management. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're going for your doctorate. Yes, a DBA, um, which is equivalent to your PhD. Um, it's a DBA. And yes, I've been in school 10 years now. 10 years? <laughs> 10 years, y'all. Listen, yeah. I've, yeah, I've even gotten flagged about, a, you know, why am I not making decisions? Why am I in school? Am I a career student? Um, no, I just couldn't stop. I just wanted to keep learning. Hey. So, how, how did you get into modeling? Everyone, everyone that follows knows your your model yes. at Oklahoma City. So, how did you get into modeling? Well, actually, it's a funny story. Uh, back when we moved to the city in '91, uh, you know, I did I wasn't able to get the latest fashion. I wasn't able to get the latest clothes. Um, so when when I could, when I finally made my own money and was able to, I really loved fashion. Mm -hmm. And I got into modeling because I saw a calling at a local model school back at six, when I was 16. Mm -hmm. And my mom and them had just gotten their taxes, and if you guys know around tax season, um, especially in lower middle class, that is a big deal. So I was able to get them to pay for modeling classes when I was 16. And I met some amazing people at, at my modeling classes, uh, but I wasn't fully focused on modeling. Even though I did amazing, I had catalogs wanting, me to model for them mm -hmm. and I was starting to do my basic shoots but then my model bag was stolen so oh. I didn't have any way to replace those things and at the time I thought I needed those things to further my career so I gave it up and then at the age of 34 or 35 uh -huh. I actually um, had the opportunity to get into a runway show those skills came back with a little practice but those skills were still there that I had learned as far as learning to walk on the runway, knowing how to do the turns, yeah. knowing the, to pose, how to do the poses. Uh, so all those skills came back, and I feel like I killed that runway show. Mm -hmm. And from that show, it was I made a decision that, you know, this is what I love, and I've always wanted to do it. I said if I ever had the opportunity to do it again, that I would not pass it up, and I would go full speed. Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I just do what I know how to do, which is. Um, so just so, so you guys hard. know, um, Susan has done a lot of modeling for me. You know, you've seen her. We've done a lot of work together, and that's where I, I met her at a fashion show. As a matter of fact, and yeah, so I saw that I saw something there. I thought she just had the look. She had everything. She was positive. All that was good. So anybody that that's wanting to get into modeling, you know, what can you yeah. tell them? What are, what can you tell them how to get started? What are some of the things you can tell them on? You yeah. Know, what are some of the first things to do when you're going to you say, I want to be a model? What are the some basic things to do to get yourself started? Thank you for asking that because it is hard. People don't always like to share. Uh, and that's one thing I found out getting back into it. I couldn't find anyone um, to give me advice and to really show me. And 
Um, and matter of fact, that was the show. You oh. met me at yeah, the well, first it, show. Okay. It was. Yeah. It was. Then the Scott fourteen twenty six. Yeah, that's shout out fourteen twenty six. Yes. My biggest advice is know the industry, research the industry, and you know just get to understand it and dive into it. And diving into it could be you attending shows, getting yourself acquainted with uh, the local. Um, fashion world in your community, which every community is going to have one, some bigger than others. You may need to travel a little bit. So, they okay, they want to start modeling, they're taking that advice. How can they, what are some things they do to be seen or just so people can see them? How do they go about doing that? Is that Instagram, Facebook? What, what do they, do those I mean, things they need to do? or Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's definitely a lot of dynamics to it. And social media, I think, is just another extension and aspect of it. Mm hmm You've got your in-person plate ways that you're going to be able to yeah. show. Networking which is going to be, and stuff. Going when you yeah, go. you're networking. Go to a fashion show. Yeah. Attend it. Maybe you need to get styled by someone so you yeah. can yeah. really set yourself apart and get seen. Maybe you're going to a casting or maybe you're just attending one. Um, and one thing about all these things that she's saying, just every time that she or I or, or any of these um, seasoned models go to an event, even if you're not in the event, Every time we go, you always meet that one or two people through the network. Yes. And that you're like, wow, okay. And then, you know, it just kind of grows yeah. from there. You always meet someone that you, you stay in contact with. Yeah. Well, this yeah. industry and that is all about networking. Yes, it's all it about is. who you know. And that's in the world, period. It's all about who you know a lot of times. Yeah. And so, but my piece of advice is, so you've got the in-person networking, okay? Mm -hmm. And yes, you, you mentioned the social media, which... I study social media and how businesses use social media. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I've been biased and been, um, because of my research and things, I've applied a lot of these strategies that I've learned. However, you can use these social medias as well to set yourself yeah, apart. Totally you can create agree. videos. Yes. You can do hauls. You can do product reviews. Yeah. You can do Poshmark. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you, there's all different things you can do to make yourself be seen. Maybe things that you're already doing. Maybe you're an artist already. So with all that being said, how do you feel modeling has changed with, you know, the, the um, social distancing, COVID? Has it changed any? How, has some things changed about it? Well, I know for me personally, a lot of other uh, models, uh, some of the work was completely dropped. The really? work, yes, there were some campaigns and they completely stopped. However, I think that was at the beginning of the crisis in America when we started seeing it. And then a lot of uh, brands and things are finding different ways now to cope with that. Maybe they're having people do in-home videos uh -huh. or in-home things to see what that looks like. I've been getting casting calls for uh, to make videos in your house. Yeah. And so I actually just signed up for it. I'm still doing castings myself. Sometimes I don't get them. Usually I don't get them. But <laughs> I hope sometimes one day I will. But yeah. setting yourself apart, um, uh, you know, again, on the social media um, is a way that you can use it during this crisis. We're all virtual. But people want to see authenticity. You know, right now you may not be able to go do those photo shoots you want to do. Mm -hmm. I know some people are still doing social distance photo shoots. I am. Yeah. yeah. I know that's controversial, but I feel like if you're responsible and you're taking precautions, I think it's so possible. Is it for everybody? No, it's not. And if you're in a high-risk group, it might not be at all exactly. feasible. But there are ways that you can create your own content. Uh, you can, and, and again, you know, get noticed. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, use that um, to help you get noticed. But yes, it's changing this uh, uh, as far as us being more virtual. So it's opened up more Zoom calls, more yeah, live. I've seen the Zoom calls. More going, lives. Yeah, yeah. I, even I'm doing um, hosting a Poshmark, uh, uh, Poshmark Coffee actually. Oh, okay. So there's, you know, it's opening more things up as far as to do online. I think this is a time that as creators, as models, um, especially uh, freelance or not freelance, you can take this time to, uh, you know, find new ways to create and show an authentic side of you. So um, is modeling your only source of income? I mean. No. Know? I wish. <laughs> no. So I got signed a few years back to oh, a company did. in LA and I thought I made it. Mm. I thought I was going to be a thought superstar that was it. and quit my job. Thank God I didn't quit my job. Um, but no, I work a regular nine to five and so do a lot of models mm. because 
you know, you're going to castings, you're trying to get work. But yeah. for me, I've got a car payment, I've got rent, electric, and I live, you know, me and my sister are roommates, so we have to pay our bills. And, you know, with car payment comes yeah. insurance, car repairs, you know, so you've got all these things that I'm responsible for. There's nobody that I have who can help me. Yeah. Or who I can fall on. And so these mm -hmm. responsibilities come to me. And my modeling jobs are just not always consistent month to month to right, month. Right, right, right. And so, no, I work a full-time job. I've been there 15 years. Anyone that's, that, that watches you online looks like you just, you go hard, man. You're hustling, yeah. man. And she does go hard. I will say that, you know. Yeah. So, um. I've given up things, though. It's a sacrifice. It comes with a balance. So, so you said you were signed at one point. I'm still signed, yeah. Oh. I'm signed with two companies now. Oh, are you? Actually. Yes. So how did that come about? What okay, well, it it was getting noticed. So, number getting one. Getting noticed. Yes, uh, online. Specifically, oh, really? okay. As okay. an influencer. As me, as I was building my brand, a mm -hmm. Magna Talent, which is based out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Magna Talent? Yes. They contacted me. Now, they are primarily film. We don't have... I don't even know if we have any agents in Oklahoma that are specifically just for models. Yeah. We have agents in Oklahoma for more for film because mm -hmm. there's a lot of film in Oklahoma because of the tax breaks and things. Yeah. Which right now, again, it's all, there's no film right now with social distancing. But uh, film in Oklahoma has been a, a great way for me to keep active locally yeah. and do things. Otherwise, there are no local model jobs. There's maybe one or two stores that hire models. Mm -hmm. um, and the hours didn't work with my hours and my full-time job. Um, but yes, I'm signed with uh, Magna Talent. That's mm -hmm. a local uh, talent agency, again, for film. Mm -hmm. But they contacted me on social media, mm -hmm. and I contacted them back. And, wow. you know, again, it's something new for them, I think. I don't, they don't have any other influencers signed. So you said you're also, is yeah. there another one you're signed Kalachi, with? yes. Okay. What K are they? Kalachi oh. Agency. Um, she, it's a newer agency, okay. and I contacted because I need somebody to help me with um, contacting the companies for my uh, proposals and things like that. So my primary reason for having an agent is to get them to help me at this oh. point, and okay. because I just don't have time to do everything. Okay. So even though I'm freelance and contact brands and try to get those con contacts uh -huh. so I can contact them directly, it's hard, you know, and especially living in Oklahoma when there's not a lot of modeling going on mm -hmm. around. So, I, yeah, I see you do a lot of stuff. Um, you said, you didn't mention earlier in the interview about Poshmark. So what do you do with yes. Poshmark? How does that go? Yeah, thank you. So Poshmark, surprisingly. <laughs> Poshmark? I know. I, I have a special place for Poshmark. I know, yeah. Because, and that goes back to using your talents you're already doing mm -hmm. and combining it with your modeling. So before I started modeling in 2015, 15 or it was 15, it was the end of 15, I was on Poshmark already selling. I started Poshmark in 2012. Yeah. And I was selling my clothes on there, and I, it started because I wanted a coach purse, and I got it for super cheap, and I sold it to a local pawn shop. Uh -huh. And I was like, whoa, I can make some money on this. Mm -hmm. And so I proceeded to buy all the cheap coach purses, and I sold them all to that pawn shop until they quit <laughs> buying coach purses because they were overloaded with all my uh -huh. purses. Uh -huh. uh, but anyways, I would realize there was no pictures of anyone in larger sizes in the clothes mm -hmm. I would have, mm -hmm. mainly from Torrid or other stores. And I couldn't find um, size above a size 18 in that picture or yeah. in that in that item, or if that if I could find that item at all online. So I began to take the pictures in it myself, and that was before I started modeling. Uh -huh. So when I started modeling, one thing I did that I really think helped me create content and have because sometimes finding that inspiration is hard. If you feel like you have to, you've got to be creative from something. And if it's if you're having a hard time being creative. What do you already do? I was already posting on Poshmark. So I would do my photo shoots uh -huh. in those Poshmark clothes. So then I could take those photos and then put those on Poshmark and hopefully sell that item. And so that helped me create more content. Then uh -huh. I started my Instagram so I could cross post. Okay. Instagram did not begin because of modeling. I began Instagram so I could cross promote my Poshmark. And because uh -huh. my friend's 13 year old son was laughing at me for having 135 followers, and he had 500 or so. Yeah. <laughs> so I came back to him a few years later. I was like, 
um, I have 10,000 now. And that was at the time at 10,000. And mm -hmm. so it actually started because I was like, what is this Instagram thing? Speaking of what is your Instagram at now? What do you, how many followers? Oh, right I don't even know. It's yeah, like it's 200 and something. <laughs> but I, sure you know, yourself. yeah. yeah. I'm I trying to keep though. up with, yeah. that. you know, I don't look at the followers yeah. because really in the we grand scheme of that. things, 200 yeah. and some thousand is nothing in the yeah. drop of a bucket with those millions that I see. Now, if I was at a million, that's yeah. what my goal would be. And then maybe I could pull some weight. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I feel like the lower. But anyways, um, you know, yeah. So that's kind of the okay. background with Poshmark. And now, leading back into it, because I was promoting for Poshmark, mm -hmm. I guess so hard, right? Mm -hmm. They noticed me. Um, anybody, if you're on Poshmark, anybody can be a Poshmark ambassador. There are certain requirements you meet, sharing, posting, things like that. Once you meet that, they pick... From those ambassadors, they pick affiliates. Uh -huh. Affiliates get paid for campaigns. Okay? And so they pick me because they notice me on so social media. You say affiliates get paid for campaigns. Yes. Explain, like, what's a campaign? What? How does that process go? What's yeah. a campaign? Well, first off, I think we back up affiliate. You need to, if anyone wants to learn more about it, you just Google affiliate marketing. Uh -huh. Affiliate marketing is where you're selling something for a brand or doing something for a brand or a company and they're paying you either a percentage or whatever the agreement is. That's affiliate marketing. So number one, research affiliate marketing. But campaigns, all that means is most of your companies out here, when they do, maybe they have some new clothing coming out. Maybe they have a new line coming out. Maybe they have um, some new products coming out. Maybe they're just relaunching something. Whatever it is they're doing, they launch what they call campaigns. Yeah. So any company you run into is going to have campaigns most of the time leading up to your busy seasons. They're gonna have campaigns throughout the year and they have a marketing budget for those campaigns. So campaigns like they would say for $100, $200, we, need, we would like for you to do yes, this. Yes, exactly. And okay. you have certain rules to follow and um, good company, uh, not good company, I should say that's, about, that's not, but companies that get the most um, results from it are the ones that have the rules lined out. Uh -huh. You need to have the rules lined out. Um, because me as an influencer, when you tell me what date I need to post on, what is my time frame, you can't give a specific time because we're contract workers, so you give a time frame. But when that's all laid out for me, it makes it easier. But yeah, a campaign is just a, basically, a, it's like a, you know, it, it's something that a company is either wanting to market or maybe they've set aside some money for that, hmm. um, okay. for, you know, that idea or whatever that is. It's called right. a campaign. I got it. Yeah. So... I mean, you do a lot of modeling and stuff like that. Yeah. What, what are some things that you like to do outside of modeling? When you're not doing modeling, what else does Susan Curry like Oh, to my do? gosh. Well, I've really been trying to get into more inspirational stuff lately. Oh, yeah? As Which far as is. disconnecting more uh -huh. and l listening to more motivational videos. Um, but besides that, I study a lot, uh, which recently I haven't been. I've been watching more Netflix. But, so <laughs> you can see I like to relax. I like yeah. to watch Netflix. I like to organize my clothes or my Poshmark area. Mm -hmm. um, I like to just relax, meditate. I love yoga. I want to do more of it. I feel like I, I'm not doing enough of it. Um, mm -hmm. So things that, that those are things I enjoy. In the summertime, I, I love to like to go paddle boarding. Oh, you, you, you I get like, out there on the water? Yes. And I can not even me. stand up. No water for me. On the paddle board, guys. And I'm telling you, it's a workout on paddle board. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I love like hiking and nature and just, um, I love vacationing. Oh. I love road trips. Okay, yeah. so I've heard I you talk. I love a lot of things. <laughs> I've heard you talk, you know, about modeling and influencer work. What's the difference between modeling and influencer work. Is there a difference? Are they the same? What, what, what's what's that about? That's a good question. I hear both of those words. Yeah, that's a good question. Sometimes it took me a while to call myself a model because mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, am I a model? I walked a runway <laughs> and I worked yeah. for a company. I'm a model, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and I feel sometimes as, as a model, we feel like we have to be justified by seeing ourselves online on the website, on somebody's uh -huh. website. And uh -huh. I feel like a lot of models, if we aren't in those campaigns or getting active campaigns, we don't feel like we're a model. I know I can attest to that. I yeah. don't, I, you know, sure I know I have even said, yeah. the, like, what am I doing? Gosh, I'm not even a model anymore. You know, and I feel like that's that balance we have to have. And honestly, you can be whatever you want to call yourself at the end of the day. If you want to be a model, you're a model. If you want to be an influencer, call yourself an influencer. And you can be both. Mm -hmm. I think we're at a day and age with the COVID that models are influencers, whether we want to or not. I actually had someone tell me, um, 
she said, you know what? I thought I was called to be a model. Uh, excuse me. I thought I was called to be a model, but I was called to be a role model. And I just thought that was just a really that, cool way. Yeah, that is. You know, to yeah. do it because we're all like role models. So, you know, if you think of yourself more like your model, role model, yeah, you might be an influencer. But I know some influencers who don't consider themselves models. Mm -hmm. You know, so... To me, me, me on the outside looking in, I mean, a model and an influencer to me seem like they're two different things because I, I, I don't really know what the difference is because, I mean, you got a model, which I, I picture just someone modeling clothes or, or modeling a product, and an influencer sound, sounds like to me like someone that is more vocal and is offering positive affirmations or, or I guess, speaking more about the product. I wouldn't, you know, I'm not sure the word influencer means like you're influencing something yeah you know, well you are and as an influencer you are um, i've actually started hashtagging myself oklahoma influencer it was oklahoma fashion influencer but mm -hmm. i don't want to yeah. cut myself just for fashion i think influencer work if you're now yes you could be a model and maybe you're just modeling for calvin yeah, klein that's it. on their billboards not and even you, speaking so you don't even maybe you don't even post but this day and age yeah even your larger models are posting online now yeah so i think there's a blurred line between mm -hmm. model and influencer now. And I think you can be both. Yeah. Maybe there is a difference. I mean, but... You definitely can be no, but both yeah. from the sounds of it. You can be people. both. And yeah. it's a business. It's tax deduct deductible on your expenses. Mm -hmm. And you need to be thinking about it like a business. And that's one thing I went into modeling doing. I thought about it like a business. I yeah. filed taxes on it from day one as a business. Mm -hmm. My expenses, everything. Okay. Um, I, I think if you can think of it in a different aspect like that and you have to have that balance because if you are going to choose to promote yourself online it can get overwhelming you get upset jealousy you're going to feel some type of way and <laughs> yeah, we've seen that we've seen a lot and, of that and you it might make you not even want to get on so you have to find this is a balance in a way that that you're going to be able to have thick skin and stay focused. Most, yeah. Um, and you want no's. You want to get a lot of no's. You're going to get a lot of no's before you get any yes. Yeah. And you might might make you feel like a failure, but you that's where you've got to figure out, okay, what do I need to do different? Maybe there's a certain brand you want to work with. Well, what are they doing? What is their aesthetic? Or what is Make sure what you their study their product. Like? Yeah, yes. Know about them before you go to them and say, hey. Yes, and, and that's one thing you. I've done. I've went yeah. to brands, and I did not meet their aesthetic. Yeah. And brands are not going to have any reason. And I'm working on that myself. I'm Even though I have that many followers, um, it's not targeted where I want it to be. And I feel like if I had 23,000 followers, I could do more than what I do with 200 some thousand. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have other pages. A Liberated Woman, so. Curvy Fashion Style. I have other pages so I can... A Liberated Woman's for my blog. Sugar Monkey, that one... You know, was my personal. I want to turn that into eventually into like its own uh, co commercial promotion page, mm -hmm. and then eventually I'm, I'll be creating my own uh, professional Instagram, um, especially as I move more into consulting and um, things that I've already started. So on the model front, back to back to modeling. Um, so once starting out modeling, what are like three? essential things there might be more but what are three essential things you think you need in a model bag you're going to go to a photo shoot what are three essential things that you should show up with at a photo shoot there's someone that they they, they just got their first gig to yeah. a photo shoot they're excited and they're just trying to get it they're they're, they're yes, scrambled what that. should they make sure they have in their bag when they show up one i think you need to have and we always hear this proper undergarments Okay. Um, but not just proper. You need to have well-fitted ones. Well-fitted You need to have... Well, you're not looking like a can of biscuits popping out. Yes. Um, you don't want to look like where things are just all lumpy. You want to be, yes, smooth. So, it's not going to uh, snatch you and give you that perfect and, hourglass, but it's going to make you smooth. And as a designer, and it's gonna make I don't it think you nice. need to have a... a uh, uh, undergarment that is extremely tight on you because then, yeah, you get all that other stuff just popping out. It just needs to be like well fitted. Yeah, you know, so it doesn't need to be skin yeah. tight on you. So know what you're wearing, kind of maybe communicate with the designer or whoever it is, whatever mm -hmm. you're shooting for. Or if you have your own wardrobe, what you don't want is to wear an undergarment that's a full undergarment and you're wearing a two piece 
So it's showing. There you go. So you really want to think about and be mindful and maybe have options. Yes. Um, you want to also, I always that's have, number one. you need a pair of nude thongs in that. That's part of okay. one. Okay. Um, as part of the undergarments, okay. you need nude thongs. Okay. And yeah. that's something maybe a lot of people don't know. Yeah. Nude thongs under swimsuits, you can use it. Yes. I mean, there's so many. And, and it's also, you can't, if you're wearing something sheer, it, you yeah. know, it's not. Yeah, it doesn't just uh, jump out. Right, exactly. So yeah. I think nude thongs are, uh -huh. I always keep multiple pairs of those. So that's the one thing. Make sure all your undergarments. Number two, if you're doing your own makeup, um, or if you have a, if your makeup artist there, but if you don't have that option of a makeup artist there, have, or if you got your makeup done and you headed there, have you a essentials makeup bag, whether that, your powder. Yes, yes. Highlighter. Um, you will sweat. I mean, yes. You know. You Ma want to you touch up. Mascara, uh, lipstick, um, any some powder, anything that you need to touch that up mm -hmm. um, in between your looks if you're doing multiple looks. Um, and the third thing, I think, just excuse me, mm -hmm. that All drink. Right. No. <laughs> I think, and the third thing, practice and have fun. Practice your poses before you go. And hey, hey, that's that's great. Yes, man. and and when I say practice, yeah. Yes, you can look in a mirror, but that's not the best way because when you're looking in a mirror, your eyes are drawn to your eyes in the mirror. Uh -huh. You're only going to be looking at the parts you want to look at. You take pictures of yourself. Set your camera up in the corner against the wall and take a bunch of different selfies. Yes. Take a video doing different poses. And that's going to show you, okay, I don't like how that looks. Mm -hmm. Try different things. Maybe look online, get inspiration. When I first started, I used to tell models, get on YouTube and look at a few models and just pick out two or three of their poses. At least always have a pose or two that you know that you can go to and do that pose without having to look in the mirror. You can just do it and know that it's going to look right. So I know that's something you have in your model bag. So, yeah. um, so I'll give you another one then yeah. since that's more of a mental yeah. thing. Your shoes. Shoes. Make sure that you have multiple shoes, multiple. number Thank one. You. So yes. you have multiple options. You want, yes. I would say, always a nude, a black, and a pop of color. Mm -hmm. And maybe snake skin. I like snake skin now or something, leopard, something like that. Um, and also a pair of comfortable flats or sandals. Yeah. Because and, and before you go, maybe even ask the designer or whoever you're working for. You know what? What are they looking right. for? So you have an idea because you might have you know. You might 10. send them a picture of the shoe. You yeah, know, they like to see that too. When I'm working with different photographers, I'll send a picture of my. It's nothing. Yeah. For them to ask, let me see a picture of your Is outfit. That, really? A lot of times. I do. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. Do. And I know some models have gotten offended from that because mm -hmm. I know I've seen it. I've seen posts about it. Um, but I have female and male photographers who've asked me to see the outfit because they're thinking of the background. They're Everything. thinking of yeah. what they of, of yeah. what the whole vision is going to look like. The whole look. And I made the mistake before changing outfits last minute to a photographer, and I learned a lesson from that uh -huh. um, because I really, you know, I hurt yeah. their feelings. I mean, but I never realized that um, as a model, it's important too. Don't change last minute. You know, keep try to keep your commitments. You know, that, that's really important. I know. Keep your commitments. <laughs> so I do keep the commitments. Okay, I might be yeah. late. Wow. <laughs> I'm so, working on that. All right. Thank you for that. Thank so. You. Is there anything else that, I mean, do you got any upcoming events or anything you got going on that you'd like to share with us? Um, I got a new calendar. Got I a like, new calendar? Yeah, because... Um, calendar book? Talk, yes. Okay, okay, great. Because it's really important, <laughs> guys, to have a balance. Yeah. And it's really important for me as an influencer. I have certain days I need to post things on sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, right now, I don't have any huge campaigns, but I will talk to you a minute about some that are coming up. But... Um, it's very important. I actually will lay my calendar out. I'll have, uh -huh. maybe I have homework that needs to be done on a certain day. Maybe I'm coming to Houston. Maybe I'm, uh, whatever it is, I will write it down. And then if I have a campaign due on this day and this day, uh -huh. I'll write it in my book. If I need to post five times for a certain company, cause they sent me all these swimsuits, then I will, uh, write it out of my book. Yep. What day I need to post so I can divide it out, kind of give a visual, and so that way I can get my other content into. And then if I don't, I'll make sure I move it to another. Um, if, I think that made a noise. Yeah. I did. Okay. So, <laughs> so it, like if if I don't get something done, and out of, like for example, recently I had five posts that had to be done. Yeah. Um, I campaign. Yes, I only had campaign. four of them done, um, and then I didn't get the other one done, so I'm gonna have to move that to another day. Mm. But as long as you're, again, communicating and I think being consistent. But for me, that calendar helps me balance my life. And yeah. I actually had to get a new one because I realized my other one um, has been used up now for the past.